Hello, good evening. So tonight, uh, we're going we're going to talk about Enterprise Laravel. Uh, sabi nga ni Jackie kanina, yung sa uh, Facebook framework, uh, Facebook framework is for Facebook. So tonight, yung pag-usapan natin is the OLX framework, and sure it's for OLX, and it's not really a uh, a recommendation. It's not really the uh, the way that we are suggesting you to do uh, Enterprise Laravel, but we'll be touching on some key points uh, and suggestions uh, how to deploy uh, large-scale applications. So, as an introduction, I'm Kyle, again. I'm a software engineer at OLX since 2013, and I've been writing PHP professionally since uh, 2007. And about OLX Philippines, it started in 2006 as sulit.com.ph, if you're familiar with it. Uh, 2009, nagkaroon ng funding from NAS First Classified. And on 2014, sulit.com.ph became OLX as a way to globalize the brand na hawak ni NAS First Classified. So lahat ng uh, classified, classified platforms na hawak niya globally, uh, they were renamed to OLX. So, some stats. Uh, we have uh, daily page views na 1.5 million for desktop and 1.7 million for uh, mobile web. And for Android, we have 6 million and 1.6 million for iOS apps. So, yung, um, yes. uh, yes. yung website app, yung web app, yung web app na visited by the Yes. So, yung website na binisit sa mobile. And uh, active users, 97 for desktop web, 146,000 uh, for mobile web. 82,000 for Android app and 34,000 for uh, iOS app. Mm -hmm. yes. And then 100 million page views per month for web alone. So, sabi nga kanina, how do developers uh, start developing web apps? Uh, di ba kayo, when you start coding in PHP, you start with uh, bare PHP with no framework whatsoever. And then files are uploaded sa shared hosting, <laughs> FTP, and then you have some updates, you upload nyo ulit sa FTP, meron kayong .php, .back. That the final, and then uh, configuration very minimal, because it's sobrang liit palang ng project, and it's done. So yun na sa inyo nakaranas ng ganon. Lahat <laughs> development life cycle. Di ba ganon naman tayo lahat eksena? Yeah. So the problem don is when. When it starts to get big, uh, pile up na yung mga requirements, and then madami na yung dependencies, nagiging spaghetti code na siya unti -unti. and then it becomes maintenance hell. So, malaki talaga yung problem pag ganun nagsimula yung isang project. So, uh, ano pa talaga yung enterprise application? Do you have any, any uh, an idea? Is it lines of code? Kung gaano ba karami or kalaki yung code base mo? Or kung gaano karami yung nagbe-visit sa site mo? Or kung gaano ba karami yung requirements na nire-require sa inyo ng company? Or yung kailangan yung uh, implement na business requirements? So, so Microsoft uh, defined it as a uh, complex, scalable, distributed, component-based, and mission-critical 
They are uh, data-centric, user-friendly, and must meet stringent requirements for security, administration, and maintenance. In short, uh, very highly complex systems. So, malaki. <laughs> so, as a history, uh, Laravel started out in 2011 as the placement for COVID-19. Medyo magulo kasi yung well, si Taylor naguluhan siya dun sa, sa COVID-19 kaya nagduha siya ng sarili niya. And nagka-copy-paste lang ako dito. <laughs> kaya lumabas ulit yung mga yun. Uh, first things first, but Laravel is also PHP. Uh, ang tanong natin, can Laravel do enterprise? Well, as a follow-up, can PHP do enterprise? So, hindi natin dapat kalimutan the web runs on PHP. And statistics show that still the majority of the websites run PHP, Wikipedia run PHP, Facebook run, ran PHP using compiled PHPM, uh, WordPress.com uh, run PHP. <laughs> And, siyempre, kung saan nag-excel si PHP, sa luyo ni Laravel. Kasi nga, PHP siya. And, kung saan hangit si PHP, well, pwede niyang masalo rin yun. Kasi kung implement ng programmers yung mga hindi magandang practices ni PHP, siyempre mag-reflect din sa cookies na rin sa Laravel. And, Siyempre, Laravel as a framework uh, from, the, from the word itself, it forces you to work within a frame. So it limits uh, what you can do with the application. Uh, tinatry niyang bawasan yung kaya mong gawin para ma-force ma kang sumunod sa standards ni Laravel. So sample sites can Laravel do enterprise? Uh, I've given six examples. First, syempre yung laravel.com. Marami siyang users, marami nagda-download. Uh, Every day, may nagbabasa ng documentation niya. So, it must be enterprise. Laracast.com are parang YouTube siya na mga tutorials ni Laravel. Uh, Gamesmart.com is a uh, gaming in website, there are 35,000 users and 2.5 million requests every 24 hours. Uh, Cointelegraph.com is a cryptocurrency blog. It has 57 million page views and 6 million unique visitors every month. And locally, we have Chikot.com and of course, OLX Philippines. So, bakit, bakit naging Laravel yung OLX Philippines? Kung makapansin nyo before, yung sulit.com.ph medyo iba yung itsura niya, di ba? Medyo may pagka web 1.0 And then, uh, there came a time na nag-migrate si sulit to OLX. And eventually, nag-migrate din kami to Laravel. So in 2016, the uh, OLX Philippines and OLX Indonesia is na collaborate sila to build a cross-platform front-end. And it was decided to be Laravel because yun yung common sa mga developers na nasa Philippines and Indonesia. Um, yeah. So when, when it was decided that Laravel is to be used dun sa bago ng bagong website or bagong front-end ni OLX, uh, nagkaroon kami ng mga key considerations. Uh, it should be re responsive, should be engaging, should be reliable, secure, fast and maintainable and of course scalable. 
So, itotouch natin sila isa-isa. Uh, for responsive, uh, syempre, should be mobile first. And as yung statistics na pinakita ko kanina, it shows na 60% is really the mobile, 60% uh, ng users ay nasa mobile. And 40% are on the desktop. And that's only for the website. Hindi pa siya yung mobile apps. And of course, yung mga non-responsive na websites, you or yung mga parang web 1.0 pa sila. Yeah, mga old school na websites. Um, Siyempre, pag binisit mo sila sa phone mo, hindi maganda. So, in this uh, in this facet, nag gumamit kami ng foundation CSS for the uh, CSS framework. Kasi at the time, si, si foundation is very modular siya as compared to bootstrap and mamaya, makikita natin kung bakit kinailangan yung requirement na modular yung CSS. And of course, Laravel makes this easy sa through late templates and And sa, sa site naman, ng pag-separate ng mobile site and responsive, you can use uh, routing. For example, if you want to have uh, m.website.com or just a single website na nagsusupport both ng mobile and desktop. So for engaging, uh, one key requirement for engaging is that uh, users have to keep coming back to the site. It needs to be interesting enough para babalik-balik. So there came a time na nag-implement COLX ng uh, progressive web apps. Uh, so bali yung, yung website mo magbe-behave siya like a uh, native mobile app. So it's app-like, it's installable sa home screen ng phone. And pag nag-full screen ka, para ka lang gumagamit ng native na web app. Ah, native na mobile app. And then, meron siyang notifications. Kaya every time na may mangyayari dun sa account mo, like, meron kang bagong chat, may lalabas na notifications sa, sa phone. So, in that, uh, pag may ganun, pagka lagi nag-notify, iba lagi kayo babalik dun sa, sa site. And then, Pag nagpo-browse kayo, there are recommendations ng mga uh, ibang ads based on your browsing behavior. So, pag nagpo-browse ka ng, say, mga PlayStation, no, may ibang lalabas na gaming consoles or ibang PlayStation. consideration for making an app, an enterprise app, is dapat secure. So first, pinakamadaling gagawin dyan, syempre, is HTTPS. So for now, uh, Google uh, already penalizes yung mga non-HTTPS sites 
sa SEO. So pag hindi naka HTTPS yung site mo, may minus points ka talaga dito. And of course, uh, Laravel out of the box supports some of the OWASP secure coding practices. So for validation of input, there's the uh, validator class. For the sanity, uh, sanitizing output, there are pretty bases. So it automatically encodes uh, special characters para hindi magraran sa front end mo. So for example, may XSS attacks, merong uh, nilagay na, na JavaScript tags, so hindi siya magraran kasi mag-output lang siya na uh, encoded. So for CSRF, uh, who's familiar with CSRF? Or not familiar? CSRF. CSRF attacks. Okay now. CSRF. So, ang, basically, CSRF, uh, ang, attacks, ang attack vector niya is pag meron kang uh, permanent, permanent URLs to do something. So, kung may permanent URL ka to, to post a comment, or to ano ba? Basta to pay for something, for example. Uh, yung usually na ginagamit na example dito is for depositing an account sa bank. Ah, depositing money sa account mo sa bank. So kung meron kang permanent URL to do that, pwedeng magpasok ng, mag-inject ng uh, XSS and then once you log in, it will do that automatically. So CSRF tokens prevents that from happening. So Laravel also uh, supports CSRF token checking. So for authentication, uh, pwede kang mag-group ng routes na naka-authenticate dapat yung user. Meron din mga public routes. So for database security, uh, eloquent and prepared statements prevents your site from being attacked using SQL injections. And of course, um, yung security ng site is up to us, up to the programmers. Siyempre, pag may nag-code niyan, kailangan may peer review. So we're doing that using code reviews or pull requests ng GitHub. So every time na may magko-commit, there's someone to check the code if you're violating any of the security measures in place. And yeah, may, may time pa para mo fix siya before ma, uh, ma deploy sa production. So for payments, uh, medyo problematic kasi yung sa payments. Kasi if you're... If, if you're accepting credit card payments and if you are storing personal information sa servers mo, you have to be uh, DSS certified. So in this case, para yung HTML na output niya, hindi ganun kalaki. And then, yung ibang icons, ginawang SVG para hindi siya redundant. Kasi, kung nag-develop na kayo for retina displays, kailangan mas malaki yung icons kasi pag maliit, ano siya? Pixelated. So in this case, para hindi dalawa yung icons meron for normal view, may pang retina isang resource lang, SVG, kaya pag nag-browse ka, isa lang yung nilulog ng browser. So, less things to cache in the browser. Um, 
modularized JS and CSS. So as mentioned kanina nga, we are using um, foundation, CS, foundation for CSS. Kasi at the time, yung bootstrap, modularized din siya using uh, yung, yung source niya na kasas. And you can compile it kung ano lang yung kailangan mo. Pero nung time na yun, hindi pa siya ganun na stable. Kaya yung foundation yung pinili. So, nakasas yung CSS, uh, yung JS, kung ano lang yung applicable na JS for a page. So, kung nga rin, for payment page, yung JS lang na for payment ang kinocompile. Same with CSS. And yun lang yung lalabas dun sa page na yun. So, hindi lahat nung hindi kailangan na code. So, for example, may JS for add listings, may CSS for uh, drop-down. Hindi naman siya kailangan dun sa payment page. So, hindi siya kinompile for that page. So, lahat yun uh, ginagawa using Laravel Elixir and, of course, Gulp. And, Yun din. As mentioned earlier, nagkaroon kami ng period na nag-implement kami ng progressive web apps and kasabay nun yung accelerated mobile pages. But are, are you familiar with accelerated mobile pages? Google AMP. Yeah. So, yung AMP is parang static page cache siya na naka-host kay Google. Pag nag-browse, kapag nag-search kayo kay Google, for example, uh, Honda Civic, um, may lalabas doon na kunwari nakakash yung isang ad ng Honda Civic sa Google pag kinlik niyo yun, hindi na maglo-load yung OLX site mismo yung cash from Google ang maglo-load so that's one way of uh, making your site fast kasi basically static na siya and pwedeng yung links doon nakapoint na doon sa site mo para hindi na maghihintay yung, uh, yung user kung nagsha-check lang siya sa Google. Ayan. So yun yung minansyon kanina. Uh, yung mga ito, kunwari, meron lang, nakikita nyo ba? So yun yung, yung mga core files na kailangan sa JS and then for each page uh, naka-indicate kung ano yung mga JS na kailangan for that page and then yun lang yung uh, i-co-compile for, for specific page and then uh, hindi ko na nasama kasi yung sa kung page pero basically for example magbo-boost ng ad ito lang yung JS file na to yung sinasama. So, hindi kasama yung ibang sobrang dami. So, instead of having 100,000 lines of code na JS, meron ka lang 1,000. Ayan. So, for the back end, syempre, nothing beats proper indexing. Yung DDD tables. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Pag di kayo nag-index, bagal talaga. Tapos, syempre, uh, some columns need to be denormalized. Although, pangit siya. Uh, by the way, who's not familiar with denormalization? Or normalization? Ng database. So, kunwari, meron kang uh, kunwari, meron kang ad. And then you're tracking the views. So, hit, 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 hit. Meron kang stats ng views. So, gusto mong malaman ano yung ilang views na itong ads na ito. Ilang, ilang, baka ilang hits siya. Mas madali ba kung ika-count mo yung number of hits dun sa uh, table ng hits? Or, nakastore na kagad yung number of hits dun sa ads na table? So that's the normalization. Instead of counting the table na normalize, yung kailangan ng stats naka-store na dun sa, sa table na 
na hindi siya dapat nandun. So, in that case, yung ads, uh, yung hit count, parang hindi siya dapat nasa ads sa table. Pero as a way of making it fast, or uh, mas mabilis ni query, nalagay mo siya doon. So, that's the normalization. Uh, caching, syempre, um, yung sa ginagawa namin, we are using Laravel's uh, caching mechanism. So, pwede siyang mag-switch ng caching from local to memcache. Uh, syempre, sa architecture din, may optimization sa infra side. And uh, API responses are being cached. And syempre, uh, when developing, you you should always profile your apps using Xdebug Profiler. Anyone not familiar with the profiler? Not familiar with the profiler. Not familiar. Para may explain. Lahat? Not familiar. So, profiler, profiling, siya yung ginagawa to know kung gaano katagal nagro-run yung bawat step sa code mo. So, when you're using, uh, when you're browsing uh, index.php and then papasok siya sa controller mo, yung database query, gaano katagal siya nag-run, ilang beses siyang tinawag. And then, yung next step, pag-display yung sa HTML, ano yung mga nangyayari doon. Lahat yun naka nakalagay doon sa profiling. So kapag tinignan mo yun, makikita mo uh, yung isang function ba, uh, 100 times siyang tinatawag, so is that necessary? Or yung isang function, 2 seconds siya nagra-run. So anong mali doon? So hindi siya dapat ganun doon uh, katagal, tumatakbo, hindi siya dapat 2 seconds. So you can see immediately saan yung bottleneck ng app mo. So, dito, uh, this is, ito yung uh, infra-optimization na ginagawa namin. So, we have uh, several instances of uh, API backend, and meron siyang uh, load balancer sa harap. So, kailangan, pwede siyang mawala anytime, or uh, kailangan siya nasa memcache para pwede rin siyang ma-access ng ibang instances. Uh, so sa level ni Laravel, pwede siyang i-optimize in some ways. Uh, yung binibigay niyang recommendations is the config caching and route caching. So, pwede siyang gawin through artisan, to PHP artisan config cache and route cache. Kaya lang, yun, may problema siya. Pag nag-config cache, hindi pwedeng gamitin yung .env na file. So, kailangan lahat ng config nandun sa config files ni Laravel, yung nasa app config. Anyway, yun. So yung mga yun, dito sa database of PHP, mail of PHP, feed of PHP. So hindi pwedeng gamitin yung dot yet. And then, for route caching, ang problem sa kanya, hindi pwedeng magkaroon ng anonymous functions as routes. So yung ganito, hindi siya pwede. So hindi siya magka-cache. Uh, Siyempre, enterprise applications need to be maintainable. Uh, 
dependency management is handled uh, in Laravel using Composer. Tapos may ginawa kami na yung uh, vendor directory is untouchable. It is uh, git ignore para hindi walang way para makumit mo yung ginagawa mo sa vendor. Kasi once na hinak mo na siya, hindi mo na siya ma-upgrade. So mawawala din yung hack mo pag wait up And then, uh, coding standards using PS2, PSR2 for auto-loading ni Laravel and yung PSR4 for coding practices. Bale, uh, PSR, PSR2 for coding, PSR4 for auto-loading. Uh, yun, Laravel does this and para pareho na rin. Yun na rin yung ginagawa na. And then, code review for enforcement in uh, PSR2, coding standards. And then, we are using uh, Jenkins and Gihat for continuous integration and testing. Uh, kung kung interested kayo, you, you may check out Athena. Uh, it's a project by OLX Global. It's an automation tool. So, marami siyang plugins to, to automate. So basically, nag, parang na, nag-school up siya ng Docker instances. And then, dun nag-run yung automation stuff. Uh, I-upload ko na lang. Um, and enterprise applications should be scalable. So, isang facet niya is uh, it should be available. Kung sabihin, lagi siyang nandiyan. Um, pag may downtimes, it should be redundant. Sabihin, may failover siya in some other place. Meron siyang replica sa different zone. So, kung naka-host, kunwari kami sa Singapore, meron siyang replica, kunwari, sa Japan. So, para ko na nagkaroon ng kudita sa Singapore, gano'n. And then, sinunog yung data center. Meron pang may backup. So, meron siyang uh, master slave for DB para yung isang Yung isang DB is just for master, it's just for writing, and then uh, every read nasa sleeves na siya. Para hindi ganun kabigap yung load ni master. And then, shared nothing architecture. Kung nakapansin nyo dun sa drawing kanina, maraming instances yung Laravel, and then meron siyang uh, local caches. So kung ito meron siyang cache, hindi siya ganun ka-importante kung nandun siya sa local. Uh, ibig sabihin ko na rin, mag-crash bigla tong node na to. Yung site, kaya pa rin yung mag-survive using the remaining nodes. Kasi yung data na nawala dito, yung cache niya, hindi naman siya ganun ka-important. Kung na rin, browsing ano lang, browsing cache lang. So, kung narin, nag page 1 ka, and then nag page 2 ka, and then bumalik ka sa page 1, yung cache lang ng ads na nasa page 1 yung nakalagay na. So, kung narin, namatay ito, dito, pwede pa rin siyang ma-regenerate. So, yun yung uh, shared nothing architecture. Hindi siya na depend on each other. Yung bawat node, kaya niyang mag-survive kahit mag-isa siya. Kahit mamatay lahat ng nodes, isa lang yung matira. Kahit mag medyo mabagal siya, pero kaya yung tumak. And of course, syempre dapat meron kayong DDoS mitigation.
it was mitigation to uh, stop DDoS attacks. Hindi yung stop, pero to minimize the effects. So in our case, uh, we are using Akamai for DDoS protection. And then, everything that happens sa site, kailangan alam mo. It should be monitored. Uh, we are using New Relic for for performance monitoring tsaka error monitoring na rin. Uh, may tanong ako. Yes, so, yung New Relic din yun, yan ba yung gamit is isa ang compiler? Hindi. Ayun ko tayo. Uh, medyo limited kasi yung sa New Relic na sa yung hindi kasi mag-pro hindi mag-profile ni New Relic yung API calls. So, ang nakikita lang niya, yung parang general view lang kung ano yung nangyayari sa site. Pero yung sa code level, yung line by line,